about Barry and Cheryl show? Hello, everyone. Barry and I are coming at you for another edition of the Baron Cheryl show. It's been a very long time since I've done one because I've been having a lot of challenges, quite a few challenges. And, um, yeah, it's been pretty hard. So I was sitting here tonight thinking about Christmas and how a lot of people are really planning it earlier than usual. And my physio today, she had her, her Christmas decorations up already, and they were just lovely. They had lovely little uh, stockings with everybody's name on them. And I thought, you know, it's kind of about belonging. And I thought how extraordinary that is. And even I feel more hopeful about Christmas this year. I never was allowed to have very good Christmases. So Christmas is a very pretty excruciating time for me most of the time. But I'm trying to have hope that it will be better and that Barry and I will be able to have a really good Christmas this year. Right? What do you think, man? I know it. Yeah. He knows it too. So, on that note, I started thinking about how Jesus is the reason for the season, you know, and how the amazing books that they used to exist um, when I was little, and, um, I found one, because as you know or not know, I collect books quite extraordinarily, and I found a book, and I thought, as a precursor to Christmas starting, I really wanted to read it. I'm not teaching my public speaking class anymore. Um, it's kind of sad. I did my best with it, but, yeah, it didn't go as well as I wanted it to go. Still... I thought that I'm really good at speaking and writing and reading. And as much as I enjoy hearing a story, maybe somebody else enjoys hearing a story. So on that note, we are going to read the story of Jesus. And Barry likes a good story, too. Who doesn't? Jesus was born in Judea in a town called Bethlehem. Mary and Joseph were his parents. Mm. Mm -hmm. Joseph worked as a carpenter. When Jesus grew old enough, he helped him. Jesus was 12 years old when he is his parent. He and his parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, because as you know, Jesus was Jewish. Jesus was thrilled by the sight of Jerusalem towering behind its great stone walls. Jesus' heart rejoiced when he entered the temple, the house of the Lord God. Jesus knew even then that his life's purpose would be to work for his Father in heaven, telling people about him. When Jesus became a young man, he met a prophet called John the Baptist. People asked, uh, people, and John asked people to stop doing wrong and to be baptized, to show that they were starting a new and better life. John baptized Jesus in the River Jordan. At that moment, God sent a dove down from heaven, a sign that he was well pleased. Afterward, Jesus went off by himself, deep into the desert. He stayed for many days, thinking about the good and evil in the world. He prayed for God to show him the way to live his life. I think we should all do that, you know? But that's just my opinion. When Jesus returned from the wilderness, he began to teach. He traveled from town to town, preaching the good news of the kingdom of God and healing those who were sick. Jesus met with fishermen tending their nets on the shore and shepherds watching their flocks. Once, Jesus spoke to a crowd of about 5,000 people. It grew late and everyone was hungry. Only one boy had brought food, five loaves of bread, 
and two small fish. Jesus took that boy's food and he blessed it. Then he broke the food into pieces and gave it to the people. Through Jesus' miracle, everyone had enough to eat. Look, let me back up here. One night when Jesus and his disciples were on a boat, a terrible storm blew up. The men were terrified. But Jesus called out, Quit! Quiet! Be still! The storm stopped and the waves died down. This was another one of Jesus' miracles. Ooh, you want to see that page? Jesus often walked through vineyards and fields, teaching the people by telling them stories about people like themselves. He told stories about workers gathering grapes in the vineyards as Jesus gathered people to God. He told them about shepherds searching for lost sheep as God searched for sinful people, hoping they would change their ways. Jesus told people to follow the wishes of God rather than worry about becoming wealthy. He pointed to the flowers of the field which do not work or worry about wealth or work for it. Yet God clothed them in greater beauty than wealth could ever buy. Although, for me, if I can have a proviso, I don't think God has any problem with people being wealthy. I think it's the way they use their wealth, exactly. I think God uh, wants everybody to be happy, too. So that's my own personal view. But I think he's okay with money. It's kind of the way you use it, what you do with it. But that's me. But not everybody likes Jesus. The leaders of the temple were afraid that Jesus would turn the people against them. They were glad when a man named Judas offered to lead them to Jesus. The temple leaders paid Judas 30 pieces of silver. Soon, Jesus was captured by a group of soldiers. They brought him before the governor, a man named Pontius Pilate. When Jesus saw this, he was sorry for what he had done to Jesus. He tried to return the money to the leaders of the temple, but it was too late. Pontius Pilate let the soldiers take Jesus away to a place called Golgotha. There he was crucified with two other men. Before he died, Jesus prayed to God. Forgive them, he said. It was a sad day for all the people who loved Jesus. Three days later, some woman visited Jesus' tomb. They were surprised to find an angel waiting for them. Don't be afraid, the angel said. Jesus has risen. He is not here. And soon Jesus appeared to the women himself on the road. And of course we know he appeared to Mary Magdalene first which is very interesting considering he could have chose anybody in the whole world and he picked her. So you got to think about that one. <laughs> okay. Just before Jesus went up to heaven, he appeared to his disciples and told them to travel to faraway places and teach people to obey his words. Don't you think that's a little bit of a problem these days? People don't want to obey anymore. You know, I didn't really have a choice about that, or my generation. We certainly weren't encouraged to not behave that way. Just a thought. And I will be with you always, Jesus promised, until the end of the world. And I think that's actually true. So, that was just a little story that Barry and I wanted to share with you as we go into this wonderful Christmas season and may it be a wonderful Christmas season you know really for all of us for all of us may we all get that Christmas wish that we want so so much I know I do happy Christmas everybody <laughs>